So what are we doing in CMAD? I'd like the whole day. But let me start this way. I grew up in a family of 12 children on a 212-acre farm. That's me when I was five. Having spent most of my adult years in church leadership, I've come to the conclusion that farming and ministry have many similarities. For example, take planting. My parents relocated from Lancaster County, Pennsylvania to Western New York when they got married so that they could help plant several churches. And just like on the farm, church planting was a family affair. We all helped with the preparations for that big launch in a new community. And that meant a two-week vacation Bible school. That turned into a weekly Sunday school for the children and for their parents. When there were enough people, then that turned into a worship service, therefore a church. And those experiences imprinted ministry and church multiplication on my little girl's heart. So it was only natural for me to go with the flow when God sent Carl and me and our preschoolers, Aaron and Bethany, to a church plant in 1987. And we began with 19 people, and eventually we were able to multiply in a variety of ways, church within a church, with a Chinese congregation. We partnered with Kim for an urban plant in Buffalo, a more conventional model with the Baldwins. We planted overseas before a building project. And even today, our daughter Bethany and her family are involved in a church plant in Pennsylvania. This next picture was just taken on Saturday when I had a couple hours with the grandchildren and Bethany planting. You know, we pass on farming and ministry to the next generation and to the next generation. Another comparison is the approach that we take. On our farm, my parents were insistent that we not only worked hard, but we would work smart. And dependence on God was just a given. That was our lifestyle. Work hard, work smart, depend on God. John 15, 5, we can do nothing without Jesus. I distinctly remember one dinner time. It was late summer, and my father told all of us around the table that it was his fault that the blueberry crop was poor again. He had spent so much hard work trying to keep the birds away from eating the, the berries, and he had tried everything from the simple pie tin to the sophisticated electronic boom. And every 45 seconds when that boom sounded, the birds didn't go. But instead, it eroded our already strained relationship with the neighbors. They hated that boom just as much as they hated when our sheep and our cattle would wander onto their property every couple of weeks when they jumped the fence. But my father was just telling us that he had spent more time trying to keep the birds away and not enough time taking care of the plants. And those blueberry plants had become overgrown. The grass, the weeds had grown up. It was a jungle. So then next spring, my daddy got all of us out there pulling weeds and mowing and pruning and fertilizing. And yes, we ended up having a bumper crop that fall. We had enough for us. We had enough to open it up to the public. We had enough for the birds. In John 15, 16, it says, I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. So at headquarters, how are we working hard, smart, and depending on God? First, let me 
introduce my team. You met Ed, would you stand up? Congratulations, you have over 300 Wesleyans here at Exponential, yes. Kim Gladden is our Director of Discipleship. You're going to want to talk with her. Creative, resourceful, amazing. And Santis Beatty, our Director of Multi-Ethnic Ministry. He's made so much progress. And yes, multi-ethnic conversations is a discipleship issue. It is a component of church multiplication. And Zach, our Next Gen Director, yes, he is right in the middle of lots of conversations about how we can imprint this onto our children and teenagers. And Jesse Sears, our Director of Operations, she is the backbone of our events. Thank you. Love you guys. Big relationships. What are we doing? We're going to depend on God first. And every morning, I want you to know, when we walk into the office, we have a short time where we have a prayer huddle. First, we celebrate. And keep posting on Facebook, keep sending us emails, because we are celebrating every time a disciple makes a disciple and a church multiplies itself, until the Wesleyan Church has a transforming presence in every zip code. And then we also pray. And on Monday, we pray focused prayer for our leader, our great leader of integrity and big vision. On Tuesday, we pray for one of the departments in our division. On Wednesday, Wednesday is for workers that God would send out workers into the harvest. On Thursday, we pray for one of our superintendents and their specific number of churches in their district. And on Friday, we pray for one of the other divisions at headquarters. We must work as one and not go into our silos where it's our natural human tendency. We pray. And then alignment. You're going to hear a lot about alignment. But what I want to say about alignment now is that we believe that discipleship and multiplication is one conversation. It's not two conversations. In fact, in your folders today, you received one of these, a discipleship definition. And the way we define it is discipleship is living out the great commission and the greatest commandment. And there are five questions, five prompts when you consider your discipleship model. And is it intentional? Relational, holistic, multiplying, is it lifelong? So we have combined our discipleship and multiplication conversations so that it's one conversation. Also, we're going to champion movement over model. We don't want to, at headquarters, prescribe your solution to your zip code. We want to encourage you, as pastors and churches, to prayerfully listen to God giving you that model for discipleship and that model for multiplication. And we will support you. We will resource you. We will facilitate connections for you to find the model that fits your zip code. We want to be strong centrally so that we can support a powerful decentralized movement. Let me just take a couple minutes because this is our church multiplication emphasis at the moment and share with you and you're going to want to read much more about it in your packets but the systems assessment training coaching and thank you Jesse and Amy Pratt for helping Ed with this because we researched and found that all of the organizations and denominations that were focusing on clear robust systems assessment training and coaching for their church planters it made the survivability rate of the church plant skyrocket Right now, we have a 65%. We cannot have a movement with 65% survivability rate. We need that to go up to 90 to 95%. So read about the systems in your folder. And each of the districts, we want you to know that we purchased an online site so that each district can have your own URL and manage those systems for your church planters. In your packet, you're going to also have information about the National Church Multiplication Sunday. 
We're going to facilitate a way for every church to create a multiplication culture in their setting. And you'll see the link for resources, sermon series, videos, and guess what? The offering stays local. Please don't send it out to us. We're going to get our money another way, somehow, some way. We want you to keep your money in the local church if you have a multiplication fund or send us to the district. God is going to provide at headquarters. We want you to take up those offerings and use it for where God is sending you to the next zip code. Another way we're going to put our money where our mouth is. At headquarters, we've been adjusting our budgets. And we're not completely there, but we are finalizing a way for us to take your USF dollars and move 1% of it over into a church plant grant fund. We won't have enough this year to fund 100 churches, but we are going to start with that 1% USF to help with church plant grants. God will help us. God will help us to get to 100. Also, we're going to connect over create. In other words, we realize that our best resources are often being created by practitioners in the local level. And we can find those and facilitate connections. And what we're going to be doing this summer is launching a free resource sharing website. We're working all together at headquarters as one to prayerfully get this out. And we're going to be curating your original resources. And imagine if all of our smaller churches that don't have the time or the staff to create these amazing resources, if they could tap into our centralized website to access your great resources. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And finally, our last approach that I want to mention to you is if we're going to do this, if we're going to reach the North American mission field. It's going to take a kingdom force. It means that we're going to have to take the approach of all hands on deck, both clergy and lay, for us to embrace the younger people sooner and keep our older people longer engaged. It's going to mean that we encourage every single ethnicity to be equally included and involved. And of course, it's going to take men and women. In John 15, verse 8, it says, This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Let me close with three questions. What if every one of our 1,584 Wesleyan churches had a discipleship model that reflected a biblical prism? What if every one of our 1,584 Wesleyan churches had a culture of multiplication? And what if every one of our 1,584 Wesleyan churches were contagiously, contagiously passionate about reaching spiritually lost people in every zip code, in our here, near, far, and even in the hard places. Thank you.